G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I've got this Waters Rifleman Pro ELR Pick Rail Base. Um, what is that? It's an elevation adder, um, and this one is it goes from zero to 240 MOA. Um, listen, this is a, a new concept, um, which I don't know how long it's been out, actually it's the first I've seen of the thing, um, and I think it's a really smart little design. Now what it's for, in, in a nutshell, is for ELR shooting for when you want lots of elevation, more than what the internal elevation your scope has. Um, and it's moving into a market where there are a few bits and pieces out there. Um, a, a, I suppose a, a very quick nutshell of the few bits and pieces out there. There is a few different forms of adjustable base. Um, and I suppose that ranges from, in some cases, get a um, scope rail made for their rifle that has a whole heap of elevation in it. So they they put a 100 or a 200 or 300 MOA rail and put it on their rifle, you'll see in some of the big ELR shots. Um, obviously that's something that you have to set up on the rifle, can't do anything else, so not adjustable, not very flexible. Um, you have the um, vernier style adjusting um, adjustable base bases, which means they have a screw, uh, a dial to wind them up to wherever you want to go to. I'm not a big fan of the vernier style system because there is potential for movement and wear in that system. Even when you can lock them up, it still needs pivot points and things to work from and, and bearings and things for things to be able to spin around, that sort of stuff. And I'm also not a fan of having two sets of dials. I prefer to have a integrated step-by-step -step rather than dialing it up step-by-step. -step. Um, so that's them. Then there is some other adjustable bases, which um, the, the Air Attack is one you see me use a lot. Um, that's one that has um, a lock-up point, has a little cam that you actually swing over. You loosen off two bolts, you have a cam that swings over um, to give you um, a very good system. I really like it. It's integrated rings, but it has only, t um, what are they? It goes from zero to 70 in 10 MOA increments. So a good system, but limited in how far it goes. Okay. Um, and then I suppose beyond that, oh, there's also some other ones with some drill holes and things like that with pivot points where they actually drill up and they clamp down reasonably well as well. So that's another system. And then I suppose we'll go all the way to the Charlie Tarak, which is a prism, prism system that is fit, fit on the front of the scope. Great system for going a really long way. It keeps your scope in the, in the right height and that sort of stuff. But not that good in the way of adjustability side of things, a little bit a little bit more complicated in that side of things. And it's a pretty big, heavy bit of stuff hanging off the rifle with a big price tag attached to it. So good system, I use them, but like I said, they're trying to put a general ups and downs of the goods and the bads in that gang without um, getting too personal. Um, this one here. Okay, so this is adjustable base, which means you adjust the, the what it does. I'll just show you that is you can raise up and down here is where your adjustment is. So you can go right up to 240, um, right down to zero in 30 increment or 30 MOA increments. Um, the very smart bit about this thing, which might be obvious looking at it like this, is the way it actually locates itself. It doesn't use a bolt to pivot itself at all. There's a little bolt to stop it falling to pieces, but it doesn't use a bolt. Uh, what it actually has is a V-groove in the front. I'll put some images on so you can see. There's a V-groove in the front of this lower block and then a nose that, uh, you know, V-groove and a nose that pushes into a point here. So it's always going to be located exactly by the nature of the mechanism. At the back here, it has multiple grooves. It has a multi-groove on both sections of, so both the top and the bottom, the little block behind here, and the one in front, that just locates itself around, have V-grooves on, which means that you get it to the V-groove you want, and you do that by looking at the lines on the side here, and then you push it forward with this little Allen screw, you push forward to where those V-grooves, then you've got multi-grooves, how am I gonna do that, like that there, multi-grooves that locate, and by being multi-grooves, they locate themselves very precisely with those points lining up with each other. So it means in a nature of aligning itself it's very smart to get a lot of adjustments a lot of increments in a locked up fashion that is going to repeat um, perfectly all the time 
As for how perfectly, what I've seen, it's been very repeatable. Um, I would suggest without wear and kept clean, there's no reason why it isn't going to be to the thou repeatable in the way that, the way that works. So I really like it. I really like the way they've done that. It's going to deal with the normal things, and I'll go into the explanation of how this system works. Your scope sitting on top here. As you lift this up, you know, you go up to all the way. Let me pull that out properly. You go up to 240. Okay, so they're around 240. So that's the angle we're going to. Now, as you can see there, if you've got a long scope sitting on here, you need to have this up fairly high to get that amount of elevation without hitting the um, barrel or your barrel guard or whatever you've got there. So that's why it needs a fair bit of height in it, which you can see it already has. Now, I should explain, I have modified this. This comes about that much longer. I've chopped that off um, because I didn't need it. It's there for people who want to set up scopes for moving further forward and all that sort of stuff. For me, I didn't need it, and I was trying to get the scope down a little bit as well, so I chopped the front off it. But that's something that's a you know very easy job to do with a hacksaw by yourself type thing. Nothing really involved with it, but I did do that, so it does normally come longer. Um, but that's the thing. It needs to be up high so it can so that it can not only not hit the barrel, but also when you're looking through the scope, you're not looking through the barrel. So you do need some height in it to do that. Um, and that other feature means that then you also need an adjustable cheek rest to be able to um, get your eye, get your, your um, head position or your cheek position in the right place to be able to use your scope. That's one of the negatives to this sort of base. I tend to find that, um, or any sort of adjustable base, it's one of the things that's going on. I tend to find that around the 100, 120 minutes is as far as you've gone in the normal sort of rifle platform. Going beyond that point, you need to modify things. But listen, if you want to go there, it gives you that ability. You know, it means that you can do it. Um, listen, what can I say about it? Other than that, listen, it's very nicely made. It's actually designed. Um, in a fashion where it's designed to fix another problem. This obviously is mainly going to be used in, in a place where you're stretching out to extreme distance um, or even when you're going to moderate distance and you have a scope that doesn't have the internal elevation. There's, there's quite a big hunk of the market which are very good scopes with all the good features. The one feature they're really missing is internal elevation. This sort of product can answer that. So you can have yourself a scope that's only got 60 minutes of elevation. You bolt this into the combination. You now have a scope that has essentially almost 300 minutes of elevation. So it gives you the ability to go to the extreme by fitting this sort of unit to it. The other feature he's done, and what I was talking about with these little screws in the side here, these are designed to be able to true the rail so you can true your scope to get it centered properly. For those people who set up scopes and bolted scopes on and, and figured this stuff out, you'll know that sometimes the way it all actually trues up on your rifle, the way the rail sits on the rifle, is that you end up with the scope settings a little bit off. You've only got one turn of, road of um, windage to the left and you've got a, two turns to the right because it's all skewed. Um, that happens on some rifles. With this system, he's made it so these little screws can actually true this rail. So you can actually true the rail up to make sure your scope is centered. Um, what these little screws have just got little plastic rubbing blocks in them. And the way I've been told you should run it or you should use it is you actually um, set the scope up and get it all dead centered and get it all pointing straight. Like at 100 yards, get everything all centered with just adjusting these screws to where that suits. When you want to adjust the elevation in it, you loosen off one side, you move your elevation, and then you do those sides back up. They're only light pressure. They're little, little nylon rubbing blocks in the end of them or plastic rubbing blocks in the end of them. But that's what keeps it all centered. Um, I, um, I suppose if I was designing the system, the, the one critique that I would, would, that I would throw in or in, in my thoughts on it is I'd probably like to see this done um, a little bit different than that. I'd prefer to see it done in a rigid, so it's, so it's solid with um, and, and not adjustable on the left and right side of things. It just stays all zeroed um, with some big lockdown screws, like um, probably where the, you know, that screw and that screw is, actually they actually lock it to the side of the plate so that you use these, this screw for adjustment. This is what you raise it up and down with, with this screw. And there's two big screws that you have to loosen to do that. And then you tighten it back up and locks it into one rigid thing 
would be if I was designing it. I'm not designing it. I can't take any credit for what he's done here. He's done a marvellous job, so I should probably butt out. But that's, a, that's my personal thoughts on it. Everything else, the way he's done it with the screws, the way it's machined, the material it's out of, um, which is aluminium, which has been um, uh, sericated by the looks of things. It's, it's a really nice finished product, works really well, located up really nicely. Um, like I said, I, I actually used it on little 6.5 to do some extreme range shooting in exactly the situation I was talking about. I was using a Steinoscope, the um, MX7i, which is, or M7XI, it's um, a very good military scope um, in with all the power, um, I think it's uh, eight, or, yeah, 8 to 28 or 4 to 28, so very good scope, um, lovely to use, but only has 90 minutes of elevation. Um, and with this on here, I was quite comfortable set up and running at um, 150 minutes for the shot which made it very easy to use, really nice systems. So like, like I said, really did the job well. So listen, I suppose that's my thoughts on it. I think it's um, great to see. I like the concept of, um, of the, the V grooves either end to make location, means it's gonna be very repeatable, work really nicely. Um, it's a very nicely presented system. It looks nice, it looks smart on the rifle and what it does there. Um, and I think for those people looking for that extra elevation, um, it is a, a sound piece of logic to it. I think it's going to work really well. Um, like I said, I, I'd probably go with some little lockdown bolts in the centre. It would be my design with things. But yeah, I'd have to say that ability that he's come in there with their ability to centre the scope in this design, that's going to have real credence for some people as well. So anyway, that's my take on it. Um, great idea. Like it. Yeah. Thanks for checking in on us. We'll catch you next time.